thing. This is very, this uh, adding some time on this is very helpful here in you know, slow motion matrix effects or you know anything like that. And basically, slow motion stuff, you know, is very important. Alright, looks looking cool. Go ahead and add a little bit more. So get it with a nice slow and a bit less. Okay. There we have it. Okay, let's go ahead and play that. There we go. And you can see that the whole scene stops when it's about to, you know, almost do like slow motion when it's about to do that. And then it's jump. Doing kind of like movements. Alright, that's uh that's scene time up. Let's go ahead and talk about scene time code here. Scene time code is basically uh you know like a production uh HUD H U D. Okay, as it displays. So we can go ahead and start our timing here just to you know keep track of our time while we're working in the production run at home. Alright, so we can go ahead and create you know, set time code, but there's nothing there. So we can do that and handle this way when you go see the time code click that we can see and can number that. Alright, that's all about it for the animated channel. We're gonna change topic now and go ahead and Talk a little bit about V4 This is a new feature that came up in my iPad as well, you know, which enables users to handle their user space in a very interactive way. It's just like the any other user space, but it has some of the additional features. That allows a little more functionality, a little more, you know, enhanced um, interactivity for the user. Let's go ahead and check out the attribute box. Here we have an attribute box for V42. It basically changes um, the interface, the work interface, and there are some of the values here. Which are definitely very performance based. And because if we crank up all these values in the picture, then you know we use motion blur and we see the cell in the interface as well. The memory is going to crank up really high. So, you know, heads up if you have like a very you know, powerful PC, and then go ahead and do that. Uh, anyway, normal scenarios is gonna work fine. Okay. Let's go ahead and create um, some scene for this. I'm gonna take a plane. Where's the plane? Let's go ahead and open up our phone at my here. Just to show that it, you know it my memory sometimes. Um, you know, I'll color back my memory when I use the new or to computer memory stuff. Alright, let's add a texture. And I'm going to add a material there. Simple yeah. material. With things to color white or something. Blue. Okay. Alright, since our scene is ready, 
Let's go ahead and talk about some of these. Now yeah, we've got a little back up in a whole system here. Alright, first it is and the solution. When I'm moving past, you know, make contact shadow for our crew. We can see, you know, shadow itself into the end of the interface itself. If I have a value a little higher, you can get more clearly. Clearly. You can see that there's a contact shadow back there. It's very cool, you know. Very robust. But also make sure that your PC is uh, up to date, you know. My PC is already starting to you know, lack a little bit. Yeah. Oh, John, you put that on. Yeah, put that on. Alright. Very confident. Let's create an animation here for the most of us. Okay. So if you put that on, you kind of start seeing the motion blur in the camera itself. Okay. And that, that option kind of adds motion blur to almost everything that's in the interface. Alright, so let's animate this a little bit. So when we move it, you can see that motion blur happening here. Other than that, I see. Alright, you can see that you can see motion, motion blur here in the video itself. You can add the added the values in there and it will definitely affect the CPU. Let's load to the proper rubber machine. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see more sample here. And the aliasing. And the aliasing does is that it, it, it smooths out the edges. You know, there are sometimes, you know, there is, you know, rough edges, edges are very pixelated and all, so we can, we can click that button and make it a little smooth, you know. We can, you know, also match the samples, get it a little more smoother. So yeah, that's, that's an idea, it is, we mostly use that while rendering in high quality. Okay. Gamma. The gamma does is it has uh, overall, you know, the light, the overall brightness of the whole scene. Alright, there, let's talk about some of the render attributes that we have here. Okay, so let's go ahead and click X ray render here. Let's open our render view. It render. Okay, so we can see that uh, in our report to render, we have an X-ray vision enabled. When we put that off and we render it, it's gone. Alright, the second one is if we want to show our joints in the render. For example, we have a rig or something, and we want to display that rig with the model and the joints itself. So we can do that by hitting that button. Now it's now snaking. Hit that button. We can see the joints. Alright, so that's a very cool feature that we both can ask. Yep. And we have also X ray unshaded and we uh flare frame unshaded. You can display your automobile for any you know for topology. And also we have an extra pass for yeah, and just to show uh, your renders. Okay, cool. So that was a little mono keyboard system. Well, that's not a little mono muscle system. And the top of my muscle system, I couldn't find anything better than the hull. Let's go ahead and play it. Alright, it's a very you know, simple animation that I did just about an hour ago. Just for this lesson. Uh, this model is, uh, I downloaded this model, you know, this rig, and created crack on that. It's really a simple rig and very efficient rig as well. And, uh, it's a very low poly rig, meaning for gaming purposes. And 
I don't know if this rig will be, you know, will we be able to do muscle system in this, but, you know, the uh, rig probably can be, you know, to do, like, test out the muscle system here. So I'm gonna anyway go ahead and try out the muscle system here, okay? So, since you can see that there's no, you know, influence in the hand for the muscle, so we're gonna just uh, work out on that you know, bicep part. Alright, let's go ahead and open up the rig. Very cool. Okay. So here we have the rig. Nice. Very basic rig. We have everything in the working. The rig is like a simple rig. Alright, let's go ahead and see if we have uh, the joints here. Alright, we have the joints here. Don't get too big. No problem. We can go to the joint side and then use the size. Alright, well, my muscle system is a very robust engine. You, know, you can create very, you know, accurate muscles. You can put some you know, work into it. We're going to do this just here on my bicep, called bicep. Okay. You can see the mesh is pretty well for that. I don't know if it's going to influence the hand or not, but we're going to definitely try. So let's go ahead and build, you know, bone shortening. All right. So this is a bone builder setup to create some bones. You can select that bone and make it small. Bone is so big. Probably because uh, the global scale of the heart is way bigger. Okay. That effect, that definitely affects and then you have the global scale way too high. So let's see we can crank it uh, crank down the valve okay? We can lower down the valve here, no problem. Okay, so let's the other bone. Go the other bone and create another geometry here and lower them down, just like they did before. Alright, we have our Fairly simple bow and setup. Slim that bow. A little smaller. That looks good. Okay, so we have our bone setup ready. Mm -hmm. And now we're ready to create our muscles. Very good. Just slim like that. Now we will be creating muscles on the device. So that here, that button there is the uh, on the muscle too. We can go ahead and create muscle for the whole body. So we're gonna just go and create this for the body. Click there. So here we go. We have the muscle built over here. Okay. So these two uh, points are the you know the bones. You need two bones to have you know to connect the muscle. You know, the tendons of the muscle. Okay. So we mentioned that and let's go ahead and click the muscle. Alright, we have a muscle here. It's a, it's a nerve surface, you know, attached to two locators. And we can move them around and we can edit the muscle as much as we want. Okay. Well, let's place them uh, in the nose perfectly. And I'm placing this, uh, this side of the muscle here with an offset because because our end muscle like just to, you know, flex our hand like that, we need to have that offset. In real life, we definitely have that offset. But so just so that when we you know, bend our arm, we get that bicep you know, flexing. Alright. So now let's go ahead and crank the belly up here. Okay, that looks be fine and Hulk's uh, muscles are going to be super big so we're going to go ahead and adjust them in the next scene here. Okay. So let's uh, change the geometry a little bit. Okay, that looks fine to me. But 
But that's nothing to worry about. But anyway, in the end, we're gonna uh, eventually hide that muscle there. We just gonna see the influence in the arm, rise it. Okay. So I have build a muscle. Okay. And then go ahead and select the muscle. And then create muscle. Okay. Give it a name, rise the muscle. And left hand or something like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, create it. All right, our muscle is ready. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's do an animation so that we can see if our jiggle and everything is working perfectly. All right, the muscle is flexing perfectly. And pumping out. Very nice. Go ahead and pull that back. Okay. Now when we go ahead and play that, we can see. Oh, we can see that if the jiggle is too much, we don't need that. We don't need that much jiggle in the hand. No? So what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, go back to the muscle parameters and we can select some of the values here. We're going to keep that new ball state uh, shape of that muscle there. And the jiggle property, we're going to keep it to a small jump. Little, you know, very small. Okay. So now what we have is, a, you know, a much better result than before. And you can you can go ahead and you know, try out a lot of other realistic approaches, but for the demonstration, it's okay. All right. So go ahead and save the file so we don't lose my file while painting waste. Uh -huh. Alright, so what do we have to do now? Now we have to bind the skin to the muscle to get the influence of the muscle pump. So let's create and uh, select that, select the muscle, and go ahead and connect the muscle with the skin. Connect. Oh, well, we have an error here. It says that. It's not connected to a muscle system. The, the skin that we have has not a muscle system. Even because our skin is already connected to a bone system joint. So let's go ahead and convert our skin to a uh, muscle system. Okay. Convert. It says that there's a dialog box saying that if we want to save the earlier muscle system, uh, earlier, uh, you know, line, or, you know, disable it. Go ahead and dribble and put it. My calculations, you know, all ways and calculations. Try to create my insert. Alright. It looks like we have a problem here. Our hope has turned down completely. Hmm. What must have happened here? Let's go and check it out. It's an error. It's an, oh my god, what is that? That is, that is a slender man. Oh, anyways, maybe this can be, uh, can be related to some lighting issues. I'm going to fix that in a moment. Go ahead and select the muscle and the skin. And go ahead and try to connect that. Connect. And, okay, here we go. We have our Hold that. Very cool. The screen is probably working fine. Yeah, so it's working fine. Yes. Everything is working fine. The muscle head is connected to the skin. And we have our joint system also perfectly working. Very cool. Now, the only thing is that we have to add 
you know, this can introduce changes in an article that the, you know, the definition that the must was given, alright? So that's like the final thing to do. Let's go ahead and select this scan. And go to this option here, A, skin weights, muscle weights, okay? So we have to go and search for our muscle joint. There we go, muscle joint. Okay, and now we have to see what areas that muscle is going to affect, the bicep that muscle is going to affect. Alright, so let's go ahead and hide this nerve sphere, nerve surface, okay? And we will paint it now with a you know, lower value because it might affect vertices by fly off here and there. That's because uh, this is uh, this is a rig that was previously done and the mesh is extremely low poly. So let's hope nothing cracks. Okay. All right, just painting it normal, but you know, definitely some vertices are coming out. That's okay, we're gonna smooth that later on. Okay, it looks uh, fine to me. Now let's go ahead and try to see if it's affecting. Oh, it's affecting that part. See, it's affecting that part. It's uh, if we have like a very high resolution model or a very you know better model. Then probably we would have uh, gotten a very, you know, very awesome deformation there. But we have we're getting the deformation that we want. You know? But muscle is definitely, you know, pumping out. So we can go ahead and put all the muscles in the body as we want in a very detailed structure. But yeah, that's about it on the muscle system. All right, next up is the Trex editor. Another mysterious thing in Maya. Alright, here we have a scene of a devil, an army devil, flying inside. That's a pretty simple scene with an animation. And I'm gonna use this animation to show you what the track header can do. Alright, let's go ahead and see, open up our tracks editor. You can find it in the animation editor and tracks editor. Here we go. So, this is a basically a um, simple panel that we have, and it is it's an engine that we use to create animation clips. We're going to discuss animation clips in a way right now. So, you can see that we have keys from 1 to 46. So we need these keys to be created as an animation set. Well, for that we need to create a character set of the devil character, okay? So we're naming that devil. That will be all devil attributes and the rest are all fine. We're just gonna go ahead and See if anything's wrong. We set settings and name all cable and create character set. All right, we we have a double character set right there. All right, now we'll be able to create an animation clip out of it. Create animation clip, double animation clip. Press value to keep it in default and we're going to go ahead and create animation clip. There you go. Here we go. We have our animation clip. Now, what what's happening is 
when you select the animations, we can see all our views in the graph editor, but there's no view in real time.